What are early signs of a toxic relationship? When you don't feel like you can actually speak about your problems since they will take it personally or won't bother listening. When every argument is your fault and you have to be the one to apologize every time. When they do something that makes you uncomfortable. And they get mad at you for expressing your discomfort. Feeling tense whenever you're around them. Nothing is ever their fault and always yours. All taking and no giving. Subtly insulting you for their own pleasure. Money problems and or addiction. An inability to take responsibility for their own actions. Especially if you find yourself apologizing to them for being bothered by something they did. When they seem to argue with you a lot. And make petty things into a huge dispute. It's stuff like this that makes you realize how much of a toxic relationship you're in. When they constantly call all their exes crazy. Trying to control you. Giving you silent treatment. Trying to alienate you from your friends. Making you choose between them and your family career passion. Trying to police your social media. Pressuring you into SZL activities. I'm in my early 30s but from my experience. When you don't let your partner have their own independent life outside of the relationship it's a red flag. When you realize that you are spending all your time dealing with their issues. And never yours. The relationship doesn't feel good. Lover bombing. Lover bombing is a classic emotional abuse tactic and the abuser often goes hard into it early in the relationship. To get you hooked. Let's say you've been seeing someone for 3 weeks and they surprise you with tickets to an exotic vacation. Or an expensive gift. They'll also usually profess their affection for you often and kind of exaggerated. Lots of no one else has ever made me feel like this kinda stuff. That way you get detached quickly and form positive perceptions of this person. So that when the abuse starts you a. Don't leave because you know they're good underneath it and b. They can weaponize it against you as a guilt trip. That's not to say every fast-paced relationship is emotionally abusive. Mind you. Every relationship works at its own speed and some are faster than others. But it's a reason to be cautious. Especially if it's an early relationship for you. Abusers tend to favor inexperienced targets. Don't be afraid to say you're not ready for something. Or that it's happening too fast for you to keep up with. In healthy relationships the other person will understand. When they're emotional when you do leisurely things that don't involve them. Sir. This is a relationship. I need some space damn it. When you have to psyche yourself up to before you see them. When you have to map out regular conversations beforehand in your head to prevent an explosion. When they start isolating you from your friends and wanting to know what you've been doing. Or where you've been. All the time. Or making you feel bad for not being with them. When you have to constantly and carefully police your words and actions to avoid setting them off. Whether it's an anger thing or a drama thing. Whether it's over jealousy suspicion or neediness or them being critical or whatever. If you have to constantly walk on eggshells because it will make your life stupidly difficult if you accidentally say or do something wrong that triggers them to respond irrationally. You know you have a problem. I think this is a good thing to pay attention to because it's non-specific to the type of problem. It applies equally to physical, emotional, and psychological abuse and to those who are just energy sucking due to their own personal issues which may not be abusive at all. Gaslighting. Run fast. It never ends. If, according to them, everyone they've ever dated before you mistreated them as crazy as to blame for their trust issues etc. And you're the first person who has ever treated me well. Be very careful. It absolutely could be true. But often people who are incapable of taking responsibility for their behavior create narratives like this around their past conflicts. And it can be very easy to get sucked in, the ego validation alone can be pretty seductive. In addition to many of the more obvious ones here. 1. Not apologizing and not taking responsibility for their actions. 2. Always constructing a narrative that absolves them of responsibility in any issue. 
Both of these indicate an unwillingness to admit fault in any way that bruises their ego. On a small level it's not sorry I made us late because I lost track of time. It's well. You should have called me to make sure I had eaten before we got close to the time to leave and why does the extra half hour matter anyway? In my experience this eventually turned into every issue. Big or small. Being 100% my fault no matter what. Plus a dramatic rewriting of history to save her ego after the fact. The biggest ones I can think of are. Moving too quickly. Pressuring you into a relationship. Living together. Children etc too fast and not taking no for an answer. Disparaging remarks and general disrespect for your family. Friends and often other random people like waiters. That's an early sign of alienation and also narcissism. Emotional manipulation. Do you try to start a conversation about your feelings? Only to come out realizing they made the whole thing about them? Do they make you feel bad if you ever try to criticize them or express your own needs? It might be them manipulating you. Being blamed for everything. You are having a conversation and all of a sudden they take offense at some misperceived slight. Then they blow it up out of nowhere. Then go on and on and on until you are in a fight and now you are defending yourself for some non-existent bullshit. Running hot and cold. One minute being all lovey-dovey. Then being cold and distant. Massive red flag. Asking questions about previous relationships in seemingly good faith. Then throwing that information back in your face later on. Constantly questioning you about your whereabouts. And implying that you've been up to no good when you've been hanging out with friends or even family. Not really complimenting you unless it's masked in a criticism or insult. Sabotaging your relationships by starting fights or calling your friends a bad influence. Basically when you have a partner who you can't trust to have your back or best interests in hard times then it's time for you to move on. Period. Don't wait for them to change. They won't. To quote myself and I'm sure many others when it's good it's the best ever when it's bad I want to die. A lot of people have that sentiment in bad relationships. What they don't realize is that the good was never as good as they thought it was. Just seemed that way because the bad was so bad. Also toxic partners often bank on you clinging on to the good days so you don't leave them when they put you through hell. Unhealthy power dynamics forming. When you omit telling your friends and family things because you think it will damage their opinion of your partner. If you're ashamed. There's probably a good reason. And it's easier to lie to yourself when you're keeping information from the people who know you best. I have seen this so many times. And I've never cut off a friend. I always let them know that I'll always be here for them. I have helped three women this way. Including my BFF and lil sis. Ultimatums don't help. Always keep your hand extended and your phone line open. Controlling behavior. It can start out as seeming like they are only looking out for your being by always having to be with you or asking who is on the phone hanging right next to you when you use it. Showing signs of being hurt that you are talking to. Let's say your best friend. And not talking to or hanging out with them and then getting mad at you for it. Here's an often overlooked red flag. Pay attention to how they react when you have positive news about your own life. Like a promotion or an award. Something that is just about you. Do they want to celebrate with you? Or do they seem to almost resent it and sulk? How they act around you when under stress is a big obvious one oh so like whether they take it out on you. But how they act during supposedly good times can also be revealing. As they still have to make it about them. And get annoyed or angry if they feel expected to think of you instead. Quickly escalating disagreements. Controlling behaviors. Underhanded comments implying cheating etc and increasing lack of space. Cycles of arguing. Breaking up then making up. 1. If being around them makes you tired 2. If you feel like you aren't being your full and true self 3. They overstep boundaries or don't understand why a boundary is being placed, this is a big one. 4. They're not kind to others. 5. You feel as though they are hiding something big from you. 6. If you aren't a priority. 7. If you are way too much of a priority. 8. They try to touch you or kiss you before you're ready. 
Emo. Projecting. IDK might just be me but if someone is constantly saying stuff like I know one day you'll wake up and be sick of me and just leave or I know you'll end up cheating on me then yeah. The non-apology. They do something wrong or aggressive. But then apologize in a way that makes it your fault. I wouldn't get so angry if you just learned to make a frickin' sandwich. Controlling behavior. When alcohol is used for everything. It doesn't have to be alcohol. My ex used television to walk away from conversations. Texting you every waking moment of the day to know exactly what you're doing and never giving you time to yourself. This may depend on the person SO. Extreme codependency and if you are both addicted to any substances and used together. Off the top of my head. Limiting who you're friends with. S of opposite SX. Tracking your location and getting in trouble if you're out too late or veered away from a certain location. Not staying in constant communication via text or social media. Your so sees you active on social media but is hurt if you don't respond to them immediately gaslighting they're always the victim. Everything is your fault no matter the circumstance. One-sided rules. I. E take a combination of anything I said above but it doesn't apply to them. Example. I'm allowed to have friends. Trying to make future plans like marriage with someone and a couple has just started dating. I know someone who finds herself in this situation over. And over. Semicolon. And over. And over. Semicolon. Dot. And she hasn't figured out it's a huge red flag yet. So upsetting to watch. Wanting to know exactly where you are. What you're doing. And who you're with all the time. When you have an argument and they point out your personal issues. When you find yourself on reddit asking for relationship advice. Joking about your allergies that someone would eat a certain allergic base food as a punishment. Yeah. That was a red flag. You spend most of your time being sad instead of happy because of your partner. How they talk about their exes. Even if they were. In fact. A psycho. A healthy person can describe them tactfully. Most psychos are genuine people who've been gaslit. Manipulated or hurt by the person who's now on their best behavior to hook you. How they handle little mishaps. Do they flip out if the food is cold? You're 5 minutes late? Run. How do they respond to the word no? This is the easiest and most important test emo. One no got me out of what could have been a terrible relationship just a few months ago. I told a man I wanted to go home earlier than I'd planned. That led to him having an emotional outburst in the middle of a residential street. Do not try to rationalize any resistance to your boundaries. Just harped out a sap. When she wants to meet at the old asbestos factory. Emotional manipulation. Also when a person shares too much too fast. Trauma bonding is a thing. They share personal stuff to gain trust. Jealousy and controlling behavior. There's tons of sign but can be difficult to spot because you're smitten. If you find yourself allowing things you'd never allow or feel yourself withdrawing. Something is definitely up. Just keep in mind that abuse isn't always physical. Edit. I've misused the term trauma bonding. Something I've still experienced, as some have pointed out so wanted to acknowledge that. Early self-disclosure is more on track with oversharing too soon. But a tactic used to get you comfortable so you share thus becoming vulnerable. Again just wanted to state there are many signs and many tactics. Learning what adult relationships should look like. Having a healthy relationship with SX and knowing yourself helps a lot. I'm still learning myself. Blowing up over the smallest things. I think it's really easy to confuse toxicity with passion. People will have f up habits like we spend all our time together. We fall asleep on FaceTime together and it's little things like these that people think are passionate displays of love when they're really just building dependency and hindering trust when you're apart. When you are dating in hopes of a commitment. But the other party informs you. After being intimate. They just want to be friends with benefits. Friends with benefits is not exactly toxic if it's a mutual agreement. 
However I have had several attempted relationships fail after deceptions that the relationship was leaning toward exclusive. But that changed after SX. In short. Don't allow yourself to be strung along and demoted to casual SX when you were hoping for a more traditional relationship. You might be tempted to be the S's or fulfillment and hope they may change their mind. But this will only bring you a world of hurt in the end. You're worth exclusivity. They don't let you sleep. Wet ear it be for something good or bad. My narcissist ex would keep me up all night. Whether for SX or sweet talk. Which turned into fights and manipulation. Despite knowing I had to wake up early for work. Sleep deprivation makes a person especially malleable. That was one of the first red flags I didn't know to look for. Followed by many more. When your GF is green and she glows in the dark. That's not your girl that's a glow stick. They're skateboarders usually. And really into more ninja tea. Always eating pizza and yelling cowabunga. I cannot believe TMNT are toxic. Too much anxiety. SX is a weapon. They are a lot older than you and knew you from when you were under 18. Words like me and I thrown around way too frequently while words like we are a rarity. Or the opposite. They pretend they are madly in love when they are not. And they say I love you way too early when they barely know you. It's all to control. Or to see if you will do or say those things too. A hard truth is that no one is obligated to date anyone. If you start a relationship and their personal issues overpower any good. You don't have to date them at this exact moment. If someone isn't ready to love themselves, 